Hello and welcome. After delving into the Joe Simon series Brother Power the Geek, it was difficult not to feel curious about his other notorious series, Prez. I'm going to state up front that Prez is enigmatic. It's baffling. It has confused me so much that I'm not sure what the hell it is. And I'm being serious here. I can't tell if it's satirizing or endorsing the issues that Prez faces in this series. Maybe both. I, I really can't say with any certainty if it's one way or the other. I have to admit, trying to open this puzzle box of a series kind of hurt my brain. The series itself ran for four issues between 1973 and 1974, before it was cancelled. However, a fifth issue does exist. Oddly enough, it was printed in Cancelled Comics Cavalcade, four years after the series ended. Presumably, this occurred to maintain trademark on the Prez character. Anyway, Prez. Prez Rickard was given that first name because his mom believed he'd be president one day, so she named him accordingly. Prez grew up interested in timepieces, and this interest led him to synchronize all the clocks in his city so they told exactly the same time. This achievement gained him some notoriety throughout the nation. Meanwhile, the age requirement for a Congress member is lowered to 18. This allows young people to vote people their age into office. These young Congress people then change the laws and make it possible for someone 18 to be elected president. Here enters Boss Smiley. He has a plan to install a president in the White House that he can control. He settles on the recently notorious Prez Rickard. With Prez being young and impressionable, Boss Smiley presumes he can control him easily. As Boss Smiley soon learns, Prez has a mind of his own, and he's unwilling to blindly follow Boss Smiley's capitalist agenda. Boss Smiley and Prez part ways. Soon thereafter, Prez Rickard wins the election and becomes the President of the United States. In the second issue, Prez officiates a chess match between the American champion and the Russian champion. He also travels the world spreading a message of peace. Wherever he goes, there's gunfire and explosions. It seems like the story is trying to make a point about the Cold War, but it... it makes no sense. In the third issue, a descendant of George Washington decides to overthrow the government because Prez wants to outlaw the possession of firearms. In the end, Prez changes his mind about gun control because he sees the value in armed conflict. In the final published issue, Prez is attacked by a legless Count Dracula. That's just... I, I don't know what to say. In modern terminology, Prez is an inclusive series. For example, the vice president is a woman. The Secretary of Defense is a Native American. For the most part, Prez ignores the advice and machinations of other powerful white men to follow the advice of those that don't have an obvious agenda. So, on a surface level, the series seems quite progressive. However, the Vice President is rarely seen or heard from. When she is seen, she acts like Prez's mother instead of, you know, acting like the second most powerful person in America. And the characterization of the Native American character is, well, culturally insensitive, one might politely say. I mean, he literally lives in a teepee by a river with a bunch of animal friends. So these two characters are unflattering caricatures. But so is everyone else in the series. I'm not suggesting that's an excuse. I'm just saying that it's consistent in its approach. There's an odd allegory between Mussolini and Prez. Famously, the Italian fascist, Mussolini, claimed to make the trains of his country run on time, and this won him the support of the people, ultimately leading to him gaining power. Prez synchronizes all the clocks in his city, and this also gains him the support of the people, ultimately leading to him gaining the presidency. But it seems odd to me that Joe Simon, who co-created the ultimate champion against fascism, Captain America, would want to equate his protagonist with an infamous modern dictator. So I have to consider this allegorical connection as an accident, rather than an intentional message that Prez is, on some level, a fascist. Yet in the fourth issue, the Native American character literally uses a swastika to repel a vampire, claiming this is a spiritual ward used by his people. Which is historically accurate, but, you know, it seems like an intentional, polarizing choice. The reason I mention this is because it's another example of the confusion this series creates over its intent. Is it a condemnation of youth culture, or the social atmosphere at the time? Or is it highlighting what may be the positive aspects of a youth-driven political movement? Or is it suggesting that young people are as prone to fascism as the older generation? Is it progressive, or is it mocking progression? I honestly cannot say one way or the other, nor could I find any interview with Simon discussing this character at length, so I simply don't know what to think. 
one could make an argument for either perspective and have a good basis for their position. Or perhaps it's so damn meaningless that it has the appearance of intent when there's no actual intent at all. It's the equivalent of saying something is so ugly it's cute. Prez may be so meaningless that it's profound. Or it isn't. I, I don't know. I can't say this series is written in a 1940s style. The characters are cartoonish and obvious. The pace is brisk, and it moves from plot point to plot point without trying to explain the logic of the premise. So it's an old style, or traditional, comic book storytelling method. Basically, it's anachronistic, and that probably contributes to the confusion the series creates. Following the abrupt cancellation of Prez, the character would make exactly one guest appearance in the pages of Supergirl number 10. In this story, Supergirl stops an assassination attempt on Prez, thus establishing that he is part of the mainstream DC continuity. But this is something that wouldn't be acknowledged ever again. The cheaply produced fifth unpublished issue in cancelled comics cavalcade aside, Prez would disappear from the DC universe until 1993. During that year, Neil Gaiman would write a story for his immensely popular Sandman series that featured Prez. Gaiman essentially rewrites Prez's origin, so to speak, and establishes that Prez truly was a person out to make a difference. He was idealistic to a fault, and he spread this idealism throughout the country, despite the harsh realities that tried to prevent him from being a positive influence. Following Prez's death, the Sandman releases Prez's spirit to wander the multiverse in order to spread his message of hope to an infinite variety of Americas. As a story and a tribute to an obscure character, it is very well done. This Sandman story proves the old adage that there are no bad characters, only bad writers who treat a character poorly. Two years later, Prez would get a one-shot special from Vertigo Comics. This story, written by Ed Brubaker, is about a young man looking for his father, who he erroneously believes to be Prez. In the end, the young man takes a hallucinatory journey, encounters Prez, and wakes up more comfortable with himself. This is early Brubaker before he really nailed his voice and became comfortable with a more minimalist style of dialogue. It's a basic road trip that leads to a discovery type of story. It's not overly compelling, but it's not terrible either. Effectively, this was the final appearance of Prez Rickard in comic books. However, the concept of a teen president would be used for a new Prez series in 2015. In this series, a young woman is elected president through Twitter and, well, this new take on an old premise worked about as well as the original. Prez was intended to be a 12-issue series, but it sold so poorly it barely managed to get to 6 issues before being cancelled. This version is kind of manic and disjointed, and it tries to take a satirical position on a media-obsessed world. But the message, if one exists, is lost in all the noise it generates. It simply feels messy and unfocused, and like the original series, all the characters feel like bland stereotypes. Honestly, I think this series only exists to maintain a trademark on the Prez concept, because those six issues are a mess. In the end, well, this is the first time I've been forced to admit I have no conclusions concerning the topic being discussed. Prez is an obscure character that quite honestly deserves his fate. He's not unredeemable as a concept, as proven by Neil Gaiman. But at the same time, Prez needs a subtle, skilled hand to make him work. He, or she, can't be a blunt weapon by a writer with an agenda. The concept needs a watchmaker, one that can fine-tune the elements, and integrate this with the perspective of the characters, so everything is synchronized, and it works without constant, obvious intervention. This is possible to achieve, but it's also as unlikely as a teen president. That's it for today. Like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I will talk at you later. Until next time.